we're going to do a quick run through on the third. We are going to do a really quick run through on some of the thermostat designations on this simple comfort thermostat. This will be pretty similar to a lot of thermostats you'll see out there in the field. And I'm going to run through them one by one so sort of let you know what each terminal means. We've done this on a few stats, but it comes in handy for guys in the field and homeowners to understand how their thermostat works. Now this is one repair that homeowners try quite a bit. It's really, you probably, if you're mechanically inclined, you have sort of an inclination to be able to work on maybe your cars and stuff like that, you shouldn't have any problem changing your thermostat. I think a lot of times the issue is people think that an issue they're having is due to the thermostat when it's actually some other mechanical failure, electronic failure in the unit, and they're just kind of wishful thinking, hoping that they can change the stat and everything will be all right. Unfortunately, a lot of times it does not occur. We're just going to run through these designations. We're going to ignore the setup process on the thermostat. We just want to know what wire goes where, basically. We look at the left terminal block. It's a black terminal block with three screws on it. We have C, L, and R. The common, or C, is basically a neutral. Every circuit has this. Your high voltage circuits will have your 120 volt circuits anyway, like you have that you plug into the wall. We'll have a hot, a neutral, and a ground. You'll have a hot delivering flow of electrons. It'll go through the device you're using, causing that device to power up, then it'll flow back to the neutral. Your common is just your neutral for your low voltage circuit, 24 volts. Your L, you know, let's go back to the common. The common, the most common colorings I see for common is blue, gray, black, and brown. The most common being blue, but I also see quite a bit of black and brown still in the field. Although I have seen gray before, it's less common than the others. L, the most common coloring I see for L is black typically because by the time you wired your entire thermostat and you get to L, black is one of the remaining colors that's not used because L is a terminal that's not used 100% of the time. L is a troubleshooting signal. An example of that would be a York defrost controller may have an L terminal on it and if you have an issue, it'll actually send a signal to your thermostat on that L wire. R is your 24 volt hot. Very similar to how we were talking about the 220 volt outlets in your home delivering a flow of electrons, i.e. electricity, to a device. Your 24 volt hot is the same as your hot going to your device. Basically you'll have a red wire almost 100% of the time this 24 volt R wire is going to be red. I've seen very few occasions when it's not red and I don't know why the people had used that particular conductor because almost 100% of the time it is red. Next we have B and O. These are both reversing valve. There's different designations for B and O because one of them is energized during a heating cycle and one of these terminals is energized during the cooling cycle. That is because some machines have reversing valves that are designed to be energized in heating and some have reversing valves that are designed to be energized in cooling. Now a lot of times homeowners will have a crapshoot or believe that this B wire is blue or common when there'll be some confusion and there'll be issues and it can even short out your machine. The B on other thermostats can be used as common. Train thermostats, TCON thermostats will use a B terminal as common. So it's very confusing. But on this particular stat, it stands for reversing valve energized and heating. Machines like Ream and Rudd and some barred units will use a heating active reversing valve. That isn't the minority. The majority will be O, or cooling energized reversing valves. Your Goodman, Train, Carrier, ICP. There's a lot of machines that use cooling active reversing valves and a lot less that use heating active. W2 is a signal to the heat strips. Your heat strips are resistance heat that are built into your air handler that deliver heating above and beyond what your compressor delivers. Your primary source of heating for the heat pump is the compressor outside when it's very cold outside or during your defrost cycles where it's melting ice on your outdoor unit, it'll turn these heat strips on which will allow you to have heat or cancel out the fact that during defrost the cooling actually runs to melt the ice. W2 is a 24 volt signal that will go to a relay or sequencer in your heat strips that will allow those to run. 
Now we'll skip over to E for just a second because that will also turn on your heat strips. That's emergency heat. Some thermostats integrate W2 and E, or they'll call W2 AUX or auxiliary heat. W2 and auxiliary heat are the same thing. Sometimes these are integrated, sometimes they're not. Emergency heat is used when you're only running the heat strips. If your compressor has a problem, if your outdoor unit is damaged and can't be run, or if the temperature is so low outside you're worried about it damaging the compressor by slugging the compressor, you might run only emergency heat. That will only occur in extreme cold. You're talking 5 or 10 degrees outside, you might decide to do that. Typically in heat pump climates, you're not going to reach those temperatures because they're designed for climates that are a little bit warmer. Or if you have a dual fuel system where you have a heat pump and then a gas furnace, by the time you get that cold, you'll have switched to gas. Our G terminal is for our indoor fan. It will either run to a relay and an air handler, run to a furnace control board, depending on how you're set up here. But most of the time it's a relay since we're dealing with a heat pump. And we'll say most of the time they're not dual fuel, they're just regular heat pump split systems. It'll run to a relay or run to an ECM motor that'll have a relay or circuit board built into it. But let's say when you turn your fan from auto to on, it energizes this terminal. Or when you have a cooling or heating cycle that's not emergency heat. And sometimes, even though it's emergency heat, it'll energize this terminal. Y1 and Y2 are both going to the outdoor unit. Sometimes they'll go to the indoor blower as well. These stand for cooling and heating stages 1 and 2, or compressor stage 1 and 2. You can't say either or because in a heat pump, your compressor supplies heating and cooling. So you'll have a stage 1 and stage 2. Stage 1 might run for a certain amount of time, then kick the stage 2, or there might be some other way to tell it to run between stage 1 and stage 2, maybe a temperature sensor or something like that. The, typically, the first one will power up a contactor in the outdoor unit, which is the relay that powers the compressor and fan. And the second one will power up some sort of second stage mechanism, like a solenoid. It could be any one of a number of things, or second compressor. So that's pretty much everything on this stat. We're not going to go over the setup on it. This is a simple comfort stat, but it will give you a great insight into a lot of thermostat wiring out there in the field and clear up some misconceptions, especially about like the B and O wiring. And just so we didn't mention it here, I guess, a lot of times when you have a wire that's energized and heating, it actually will, they will use a blue wire and use a different wire for common. That's why it gets so confusing because they say B for blue. The O wire is usually orange to go with the O. The W2 wire is usually white. The G wire is usually green, although some machines use a black and some machines use a gray. Emergency heat wire, a lot of times it is brown. Y1 is typically yellow, and Y2 I've seen black or purple. Several different things. Y2 is somewhat, it's more ambiguous because there's not a real definite color for Y2. A lot of times I use black or purple, depending on what kind of wire you're using and how many conductors it has. But that's it for this one, guys. I hope it helped you out, and I will see you on the next one.